compliance with the requirements of the Open Building Meeting Act by providing notice to all the Mr. Clinton County Clerk and the Final Area Secretary of State on December 23rd, 2015, and that the Commission is officially designated newspapers on December 23rd, 2015, by posting a copy of the Golden Board of Commission. All right. Roll call.
I don't know that I've ever met anyone more excited about science and climate than now. I, I interviewed her. She just exuded joy about this job, as I do each and every morning when I wake up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so her learning curve was zero. She's done field research. She's joyful about it. Um, I just hope we have her in the office a little bit more so she could deal with the other side of the house, which is not quite so joyful. So this is Marilyn Sobel. We are delighted to have her um, as a new employer. Thank you.
pleased to announce that on September 8th, we're going to hold our kickoff meeting with the exhibit designer or uh, fabricators and installers and our contractor. So that's going to start our process. Um, I have asked for an updated schedule, project schedule for that, and I'm happy to share that with commissioners once that comes out. Uh, as noted previously, it's about an eight month process to complete the visitor center. Last but not least, as you may recall, uh, we have been asked uh, to complete a biosphere periodic review report. Uh, all of the biospheres in the world have been asked to complete this report to kind of provide an update on where we are, what we've done, uh, and how we're meeting the goals of the biosphere program. So uh, currently we are about done with the draft. The final report is due next month. It's already over 120 pages. And so this has been what we've been up to, uh, what we've been doing for the last approximately two and a half months. Um, many members of your staff. It's a big uh, project for us. A lot of very interesting questions for those who have read the report and the questions that were being asked. So if anyone has any questions about that, we have to answer. I would just add on the biosphere thing, it, it's a moment for the United States that they're readdressing their involvement in the UNESCO biosphere program. I mean, like for the time I've been here, and I'm sure for those of you who've been here longer, we never talk about it. It's just something we are. And I sense that now, um, and maybe um, Commissioner Cavelli knows more, but it seems like there's a renewed focus in this country, which would be really good for us, because there's an opportunity for us to now sort of engage with other biospheres and talk about things, issues that we share, things like offer vehicles, things like encroachment of development and infrastructure. It's always really good when you can talk to other people who experience similar things. We are somewhat unique, but there are other biospheres that have developed it very close to them, if not within their borders. So I'm optimistic that this, you know, assuming we get approved again and, and we move forward, that, that it'll be a good opportunity for us. Worth the effort to do the document. No. All right. Uh, move on to resolution. First, we had uh, resolution of development application for Cape May, uh, Atlantic Cape Community College, and Borough of Bedford Lakes. Mm -hmm. So, second. So, okay. Are there any questions or comments on these applications? These applications. I also think the municipal bodies should be able to report 
kinds of misunderstandings that go on and create violations. Uh, I'm not saying they did it on purpose or anything. I just am disappointed that the people we work with the closest to a lot of violations occur. Um, just as a question out of a curiosity, it was a soccer complex, this grass field or whatever, will they be replacing it or moving that to another area or something? Commissioner, the discussions that we've had with county officials, they will be relocating the soccer complex actually outside the Pinewoods area. For those of you that are familiar with Southampton, Route 206 in that area is the boundary of the Pinewoods. Vincent Town proper is located outside the Pinewoods. They will be located in the soccer complex adjacent to Vincent Town outside of the Pinewoods area. Good. Thanks. Any other questions or comments on this resolution? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, we have a uh, resolution from Camden County for some work along the Great Arc Great Lake Harbor River. Do you have a motion? I'll move it. Second. Any questions or comments? Okay. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. Okay. Right. Last resolution. For a uh, waiver of strict compliance uh, denial for a resident uh, in Walton Township for single family dwelling. Do have a motion? So moved. So, motion second. 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 Any questions or comments on this? Or deny. <coughs> yes, Commissioner, the, uh, one of the programs under the Pine regulations, something known as the Limited Practical Use Program. That's where the Department of Environmental Protection the State in Jersey will acquire certain parcels that have limited use. One of the requirements for that is to apply for a waiver of strict compliance first to determine whether the parcel could be built under our rules. This is a determination that it cannot be built and thus a denial, but that makes them eligible for consideration under that state acquisition program. Any other questions or comments on this? <coughs> All, right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? All right, up next, what do we got? Water. That'll be a point for that one. Sorry. This is the most confusing application. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the reason why. <laughs> All right, next I think uh, we move on to public comment on agenda items and public development applications. Uh, this is for things that are on the agenda or for the list of pending development applications that is in the packet. We do ask to keep your comments free. If you do have something that's longer, please try to see it in writing. Everybody here for public comment just on pending development applications. Good morning, my name is uh, Mark Dimitrov, I'm a resident of Richland Village. Uh, the application I'm talking about now is the application to rebuild on a house that was torn down about for demolition. Um, the property itself is actually got three separate applications on the same parcel. It's in violation of two of those earlier applications. Mr. Dimitrov, I could interrupt you for a second. We had two pending yes, developments that maybe so you're talking about. 2006. Reconstruction of 1,500 square foot total? Uh, the reconstruction of a, of a building, of a retail store. Okay. Let me try that right more. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. It, it's pretty fascinating because this same parcel was before you last spring, and I pointed out that in fact 
for stormwater basin number 13 uh, in that location. And this application proposes to use what was originally the old septic system for the house. It was morphed into a stormwater basin with the weir and all of your um, metrics that were used to get this town off of violation, multiple violations earlier. And now in that same exact spot, they are proposing to reuse the existing septic that is there. And this was kind of interesting because the actual application, even though it came in in early June, June 2nd, it did not show up in the active public, uh, uh, public active report, status report, until uh, four days after it was approved for coming to you. So it was being hidden. And I can understand why, because I really question whether or not you can approve stormwater basin number 13, which was used to satisfy a violation. In fact, can that now be used again as a septic system? I mean, because by your own rules and state rules, there's 25 foot buffers to various components, 50 foot buffers to various components of these septic systems. If you look on the second page, you can actually see the footprint of the stormwater basin. The metrics used go up to those blue lines, the blue dashed lines. And where I have the letter S in a dark box, that's where the proposed septic system is. So basically, you're putting a septic system where it could never possibly be. And you have a stormwater management system that really is deceptive. The township itself had used almost, if you go to the third page, the township itself had proposed almost 3,676 feet of linear swales. Now, of course, that's impossible because like a lot of the metrics on the original redevelopment, water goes uphill through solid objects. And in this case here, they could never ever deed restrict and do an easement on those various uh, stormwater, phantom stormwater uh, 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 components that would be necessary to pass the final standards on a property that had multiple violations. This property had multiple violations. The interesting thing is, is then that at that point, the pilot staff threw them a softball and said, okay, all you need to do is deed restrict two small areas next to the basins. And they never did that. They never went to the county, they never deed restrict. So this property is still in violations for the prior stormwater management problems. And we, as you know, we flood. I've been in front of you before showing you how we were claimed that there was stormwater management built. The town said, well, we built the stormwater management things, which would have meant they would have had to have built the sidewalks, built the stormwater management facilities, filled them in, then gone in the second phase of the sidewalks, built the stormwater facilities, then filled them in. And then the third section, I actually asked this in the meeting, and the engineer says, yeah, that's what we did. We filled it in three times, which would have been 25 tandem loads. And so now what this is, is this is how to recorrect, to correct those violations. And now I can't understand where are the easements for the various things. You threw them a softball, you gave them a chance to put easements someplace else, they never filed those. So this property is still in violation, and as I understand, you cannot approve further development on properties with violations. But even worse, to hide this from me and the public until after, four days after it was approved for review. And on top of it, we have the, the Deputy Attorney General watching this, sitting here, allowing this to happen. I'm appalled. How can we do this? What's the difference between what you're doing here and a parking commission basically allowing parking violations, fixing parking violations for a friend? It's strong words. But I put in front of you, we have a stormwater management basin that was approved, and now you're making a septic system out of it again? Please. I believe in the CMP. I hope you do too. I also submitted other, there's other violations there. They have no cultural surveys, et cetera, et cetera. Take a look at my other applications that I've submitted and you can learn more. But still, we have a problem here. You cannot approve a stormwater management system for a septic system. Thanks, sir. 
Thank you. Anything else for pending items or agenda items? All right, hearing none, we'll close that portion of public comment. And then next, our budget. Yeah, it was about 
competing. I don't understand. Yeah. And that's why I'm asking is, is it seems like it may be time to talk about it. Yeah. Yes. We agree.
on ordinances and moving things. I frequently, really frequently get phone calls saying, this is taking too long. Just one other thing, if you don't mind, uh, and I need to talk to you, I'm glad Bob brought it up, because I was talking to Nancy before the meeting on, on application fees. You know, as, as you know, I'm sure Alan knows that most of how all municipalities charge an application fee, and then the developer has to put an escrow uh, fee up front, and then they, they draw down that escrow for the reviews. And at the end of the day, the developer pays the whole app, the, the, all the reviews, plus an application fee. Even with these application fees that we're proposing, at the end of the day, we're, we still, we're still not covering all our costs. And I, I don't know why we would want to continue to take a loss on reviewing applications. So my question is, why don't we do what, what all towns do and have a set application fee? What I mean by that is that someone comes in with a 50 lot subdivision, it's a $5,000 application. And then there's a formula under municipal land use law that says that you have to post an escrow account to cover the review fees. And then you draw down on that escrow as, as the review takes, takes, takes effect. Once you reach a certain level of, of percentage that you fall below that, then the review stops until the developer replenishes that escrow fee. Why aren't we doing that? Why are we continuing to take a, a loss on reviewing applications? And maybe if we weren't taking a loss on that, we can afford a raise across the board for all the employees. And pay the bill. And, 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 and get a generator. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Something else I can spend your money on. Okay. 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 Now that I want, to spend, I, I want to digress too far from where we are here, from what I understand, um, I'm limited knowledge, is that the application fee for most municipalities or uh, county governments covers their in house fees for what their review is. It's the escrow that covers. Yeah. An outsider coming in to look at yeah, it. That's, years, at all. Yeah, that's yeah. how we handle it, at least in our yeah. That's, that's not what most towns do, I can tell you. Most towns charge an application fee, mm -hmm. and then you charge that escrow for the review of that plan by your professionals. Those are, that are always on staff. I mean, you have your plan, your engineer, your plan board engineer. That's how those fees are built. Those people on staff. Those are all outside firms that do that work. I understand. But there, there should be a way to do it. We're still reviewing the plans in house. <laughs> Just like that. We're still reviewing them and it's still costing us the money. It's the bottom line. I think one of the CMP review items was fees. So. Well, yeah, but it's still not going to cover our, all of our costs. If you read it, we're still going to take a loss. We're not going to cover all our review fees. If I, if I understand what I read correctly, we are still not going to recoup yeah. all of our costs in reviewing an application. So we're going, it's going to cost us more. We do have escrow for special things, but not, not like what we were just right. talking about. I just don't understand why we would want to take a loss or ridicule for that application. I don't know if you go down the road here, but how much of um, a loss are we talking about? Well, we're bringing $500,000 in permit fees, and our salary line is, you know, what is it? 2.9 million. Not everybody's doing permit review, but. I, I don't have a specific number. I don't know if you do. This was in the packet for P&I. We're a little further off the subject. Rob brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You opened the door. I have been bed, Peter. I have some suggestions to raise fees that I passed on. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me see. Whether we should do it, how we should do it, if we should do it. Right, so I'll start going back to focus this in on, on budget. Are there any other questions or comments on the presentation? or any of the budgets that we had here. We had a motion and a second. All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Any abstentions? Very good. Next up is general public comment. Again, this is time for the public to come on up, uh, make any comments uh, that you would like regarding the fine lands, uh, I do ask, again, if you have something that's uh, lengthy, please submit those in writing. Try to keep your, your uh, comments to approximately three minutes. I have a list here. First on the list for public comment is Terry Schmidt. Uh, 
before I start my public comment, I'm going to provide the commission with handouts. My name is Terry Schmidt. I live in Lower Bank, New Jersey. And briefly, let me tell you that I have been studying the Pine Barrens for 12 plus years, formally providing data to both nonprofit and government agencies on botanical issues and participating in programs related to Pine Barrens resources. My comments today are related to the roadside mowing issues. I know I don't have to share with you that there is a big push nationally and legislatively in our state to protect and draw attention to the pollinator species in the wake of the monarch decline. Um, I also don't have to share with you the initiatives and public awareness to eradicate and control invasive species, which is um, largely led by Michael Van Cleff, who is the person who in 2009 provided the Pinelands Preservation Alliance and the Commission with a detailed best mowing practice guideline. Um, I, finally, as a fact, less fire, less open areas, habitat closure has resulted in roadsides that have become increasingly valuable for resource rare plant habitat. Um, through my involvement with ongoing classes and workshops, attendance of DEP meetings, and leading and participating in field trips and assisting with research projects, conversations during these times ultimately revert to what needs to be done to handle the disappointment in what we see on the roadsides. And the common denominator always comes back to the necessity of regulation and leadership by this commission. Um, I, I know that um, the Pinelands has a good tool, the Pinelands Commission has a good tool in utilizing MOAs, and, but I do, if my recollections and information I looked into was correct, they are not fully being in, enforced or asked to be complied with. Um, my two references in this handout that I've provided to you. And I honestly will tell you that this information that I that I put into this handout was taken in the last two weeks from Atlanta County and Burlington County. Um, staff at Franklin Parker Preserve worked hard with the county employees to the point where they stood on the side of the road waiting for the mowers to come down the road, begging them, please just mow eight feet from the white line. Um, it took them four years to do it, but you have an MOA process. Um, of the understanding also that through the signed MOA that the Pinelands Commission has with Burlington County Road Department, that there was a relaxation of permitting application process for Burlington County if they did indeed adhere to the MOA. I can assure you, all you have to do is look in front of you. They are not adhering to your best mowing practices MOA. I'm not an activist. I bring to you science-based observation only, and I bring it to you in the way of a handout. I've done ground proof surveys that support my concerns and those of others. And with this handout, I only ask of you three things. If there is indeed an MOA with Burlington County, and they are not maintaining the agreement that they have in place with you, please revoke the privileges that you offer them to streamline their permitting process. Go back to the old way of doing things until somebody's willing to stand up and do what's right on the roadsides. Look at the document. I ask you just take two minutes to look at the document. It is easy for you to ride three miles down the road to the bend in the road just north of Greenwood Bridge Road and see that Burlington County mowed that bend in the road where wetlands habitat is and native plant species are, and we've done four surveys there, and then they went back a week later on a rainy day and they scraped it down to the soil, so now you see no vegetation coming back. And then finally, I ask you to check this item off your to-do list. 
I know the commission has a lot to do, has a lot of responsibilities to maintain important issues within the Pine Barrens, but I ask that you don't look at this activity through policy, regulation, and legal eyes. Look at it for what it is. It still leads you to do the right thing. I have this handout um, electronically. I've shared it with Robin Jenny. I will happily share it with the Science Committee. Um, just as an aside, when I, I, they've, I've spoken to people on the Burlington County road crews. They see nothing wrong with what they're doing. They claim this is the way they do it every year. I don't usually get involved with things like this, but this year it seems like they are extremely aggressive in their mowing practices. I like to ride my bike. I like to stop on the way home from work. I spend three hours a day minimum in the car, walk along the roadsides. There's very little to look at. Um, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to, to answer any questions you may have. And I, I thank you for your support. I thank you for anything that you can do to help address this. Um, educating the county government. Thank you. Hi everyone, Jason Howell, Pilots Preservation Alliance. I just want to thank Terry for that excellent speech you just gave. I thought that was just perfect right on. She's a really passionate botanist and we, we really should do the right thing here on that. Um, the other thing I wanted to thank was Nancy for arranging the call to the Assistant Commissioner of the DEP on the uh, issue I spoke about where I had observed individuals driving illegally and they uploaded their video about them driving into the Basto River other sensitive uh, areas. Uh, Rich unfortunately said that there was probably little he could do, uh, but that he would pass the video along potentially to a detective. We'll see where that goes. Uh, we do volunteer efforts from time to time in the Pinelands. Uh, tomorrow we'll be going out to Apple Pie Hill to clean up and we paint over some of the graffiti. Uh, three weeks ago, we went out and planted 300 Atlantic, Atlantic white cedar trees on private land. Uh, two days ago, I received a message that I should go and check the planting. Now, this area had been abused by off-road vehicles in the past, but if it was on private land, we would post it private property signs, and we thought the restoration effort would, would hold. But unfortunately, what happened is they, they did donuts over the planting. Um, they then ripped up the trees. They put them in a pile, poured gasoline or some other accelerant on them, and let them on fire. And I bring this up because this is the, the, the cultural element that we're dealing with out there. I think it's very hard that if you're not exposed to it to understand what it is we're, we're really dealing with. And that kind of mentality is really hard to address, but it is solvable. And if the DEP is having a hard time finding these people, they should talk to me because I have made numerous reports over the last year. I see them weekly, sometimes daily, and uh, we really need to address this issue. So again, I thank you so much for, for taking this seriously, and, uh, and uh, have a nice day. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Mark Mitchell, Pine Ridge. Uh, Mark Mitchell, uh, Richland Village again, and uh, I wish to echo um, Lynch's uh, uh, concern about the review. The reason I say that is, is that my town is the um, uh, priority of the redevelopment. It is uh, 40, there's 47 villages that encompass 24,000 acres and under your current efforts to comport with the state development and redevelopment plan, you are turning these into ultimate priority growth zones. They can't be called priority growth zones because that can't be used. And this would mean for sewers and water for these villages to then force growth into these areas. Now redevelopment does not even exist in the Pinelands, which is really a surprising thing here because when my town started its redevelopment, they broke five and I broke in six state statutes. I went to 
the first to the DCA, spoke with their smart growth group, spent six months with their attorney, and they basically said, you got valid points, but we don't mess with the pilot. That are their own entity. You've got to talk to Stacy Roth. And I asked Stacy Roth three times the same thing. I said, Stacy, your senior uh, counselor, whatever that is, uh, what is the Pilots Commission's view on these redevelopments? Oh, no, 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 it's not the CMP, it's not our problem. Mark, go to the local finance board. Well, I'd already been to the local finance board. And they spent three months, and their attorney threw his hands up in the air, and then he tipped it off to a deputy chief attorney general who spent another three months on the problem. And he threw it off to the Attorney General of New Jersey at that time, Paula Dow. And Paula Dow spent six months with it and actually gave me a phone call and said, Mark, the Pilots Commission, it's obvious, has control over redevelopment. It's a form of development. All development must come forward to the CMB. I said, no, Ms. Dow, this is, look at this right over here. You're looking at, uh, they had three letters from Ms. Roth saying, not our car, baby. And she said, Mark, I cannot leave you in the lurch. Now, I don't know if you know what a lurch is, but lurch has nothing to do with the Adams family. A lurch is a board game that was played in France in the 16th and 17th century. Of course, the rules were lost, but the way you beat your opponent is you didn't win. You put them in, in a position that you never win. That's the way you want in a lurch. And she says, you're in that position. And she spent another three months and actually wrote me a piece with the law that basically says that redevelopment doesn't exist in the pine lands. And here's where your problems come in. That application that we're talking about today, it went through 14 iterations. Because it's the actual community doing the redevelopment, it never goes for a review. And so what's reviewing it is the same engineer who's also the town engineer. So by the time it comes to you, you're being forced to do all the work to make sure this thing comports. And after 14 separate reviews, it still didn't pass the smell test. And so what your staff has ended up having to do is to accept gerrymandered lines that take 50 feet of my property. They have to accept that water goes uphill. They have to accept that water goes through solid objects. They have to accept that a septic system is a stormwater management basin. And you're stuck with the review again and again and again, and then you finally just have to throw this water baby off to somebody else. And who is the victims of this are the people in our village, the residents that you're supposed to be taking care of. And so if you want to know the biggest inefficiencies, if you approve Richland Village redevelopment projects, which you are responsible for, if it's used here and are successful, and that's the prototype. In your own words, Dave Putner from this office said that's the prototype for all villages in the Pinelands. We are in a scary position because I know this was a huge money maker for you, money loser for you. And if you don't stop this nonsense now, you're going to have to deal with it in 46 other villages. Keep to the CMP. Thank you. Thank you. That's all who signed up for on the list of anybody else for a public comment. All right, seeing none, we'll close public comment. Do we have anything for closed session? Okay. All right. Uh, any comments from the commission? Once again, we've had some discussions today uh, about Ward State Forest. Thank you, Nancy, for, for continuing to follow up and you know, having staff work on a, on a map uh, for us and following up with the you know, enforcement issue. Uh, as Mr. Howell brought up, enforcement continues to be a, uh, an object you know, that, that merits our attention. Now, obviously, the situation he discussed was on private property, uh, something we don't control. But I think. Uh, we've been very right to be concerned about this ongoing problem at the State Forest, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, our review of what the staff's coming up with in September in the hopes that we as a body can take some action to, to firmly declare to the public that we do not uh, condone uh, the kind of activity that's happening that's random. 
land staff at uh, our state forest, and then we are going to do what we can within the bounds of the CMP, what the CMP allows us to do, uh, to try and support the uh, better enforcement there. And in my view, that means arming the, uh, the enforcement officers at the state forest with a map that says where the public can go, where the public cannot go. And so we have to review that in September and, and see if we can decide that as a body. Uh, so, so thanks, Dave, for the work on that. And I thank Mr. Howe and, and people like him who are continuing the good fight with citizen enforcement out there. Uh, and then one other thing, if I may, Chairman, just like to point out for our colleagues who, and the public who may not have seen it, uh, our, our colleague, uh, Commissioner Ashman, was awarded once again uh, by a state uh, group, the uh, Raritan River, uh, Friends of Raritan River, to uh, acknowledge her great leadership. She's one of the eight New Jersey citizens who are recognized for outstanding leadership for the work that they do to preserve and conserve the Raritan River Basin, but also for her work throughout the state uh, in protecting the environment, particularly right here at the Finance Commission. So I want to uh, tip my hat uh, to Commissioner Ashman, who actually
signatories to the MOAs. If, if I may respond to that, I don't know if it's proper to do so. Just a, a standard eight foot from the solid white line at the edge of the road satisfies everybody during growing season. Come in in November, mow anything you want, cut back any of the shrubs you want, you're not going to hurt anything. That's general. My issue is where the no mow signs exist, and in that picture you'll see the mower just went through and Burlington County truck is going down to pick up the mower. They plow right through the no mow zone. So sign. Our, our no mow zones are made through November to November. That's what we try and do. Not let everything grow. And, uh, and that's not that's older. not hard or difficult to convey to entry level lawn mowing maintenance people. It, 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 you can't fix stupid sometimes. <laughs> Respectfully, you're oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, A lot of the uh, plants that we talk about here in the commission, the TD species and the wetland species, are found here on the grounds of uh, the commission. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I was wondering if Paul could maybe give us an update on the bio garden that uh, we have. If you haven't visited that bio garden periodically, see the changes, uh, mm -hmm. you really should do that. But can you give us an update on that? Yes, uh, it is thriving right now. It's almost at its peak. We've had numerous orchids that have bloomed. It's, uh, I think we have about five or six threatened endangered species in there. Currently, two of them are blooming the Orange Meadow Beauty and um, the Coreopsis, the pink Coreopsis, is blooming right now. Um, it's doing very well. You may have noticed as well, we planted numerous plants in front of this building all throughout the colonists, native pine barren species. Um, we're trying to lead by example. And we want to use this as part of the visitor center so when people come in, use it as part of the experience and teach people about the importance of native plants and plants. What are some of the plants you've planted recently around the commission? So in front of this part of the building, we put in switchgrass and we also put in um, uh, showy aster as well as, um, I'm trying to think of all the species, I'll get that time. Uh, <laughs> the um, goldenrod, uh, grass leaf, blazing star, and Maryland golden aster. They're all about to bloom. Some are blooming right now, and they're going to spread. The idea is we want to expand this uh, around the building so when we have our visitor center, more people can, can see many of these species that, in some cases, they've never seen. Um, for example, we had uh, swamp pink blooming this year for the first time in our bug garden. And I checked the bug yesterday, went in there, and it's full of buds for next year. It's going to be very fruitful for a few. So. so they had the buds the year before? Yes. I always like to see the sweet fern when I walk in. It's been planted there for a number of years and it seems to be expanding. So, great. It's a lot easier to take care of uh, native species, I think, than, than introduce them. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Any other comments? Oh, one thing to, uh, to follow up to, to Alan and the concern on the moment the knowledge of the grass and the shoulder of the roots. Right. I've been the public course manager for the Winslow for probably, I don't know, 30 years, 39 years. And, uh, we have about 110 miles that we take care of. There's 180 miles that we got for a lot of this in development. But 110, 120 miles of uh, bird land, which is 200 and some odd miles of land miles. You know, we always take the position, ever since I've been here, we only cut four trees. You know, one pass, you know, with the mower. And I, I don't know why we would even entertain an idea of cutting back eight feet. I, I don't understand that. I don't see what the need would be to cut back more than a four foot pass. A well, lot of it is aesthetics and stone and site distance, especially the intersections. You know, that if we really keep on the intersections so it don't get too high, but grass has to get pretty damn high to interfere with site distance at, at an intersection. But I, I just don't understand why we're, we're entertaining this idea of a big foot from the white line. And I don't I understand why that would be. Sir, eight feet from the white line means four foot of asphalt on the shoulder and then four feet of mowing. So what we're saying is essentially the same. Um, what's the eight feet then? Right? From the solid white line at the edge of the road. It leaves four feet of asphalt shoulder and then four feet of... Uh, because our edge lines are right at the edge of the blacktop. Okay. But the bottom line is we only make one pass along the grass. grass Correct. Line. As it should be. And that's what you're saying? That's yeah. what you're winding up with? Okay, no. I wasn't aware that you got yeah. four foot shoulder of blacktop. And then four for the grass. Yeah. Okay, that's a fair question. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Any other comments from commissioners? All right. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor?